underestimating who I am. All right, so we have James Cameron and director Robert Rodriguez teaming up for this giant epic that's been in development for quite some time. How did it turn out? Let's find out. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey, what's going on, guys? Thank you so much for tuning in to my opinion slash review for Alita Battle Angel. I really do appreciate it. Now, this film right here is something that I was looking forward to. This was in my top uh, most anticipated films of 2019. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Check out that video that I uploaded earlier this year, and you will see this film on this list. Now, when the trailer fish first initially came out, I was a little turned off just like everybody else because I thought Alita's eyes were just too big. It was just a little too weird. Uh, but all the subsequent trailers and material, marketing material that came after that, I started to slowly get on board and I really did anticipate this film. Um, it looked like it was a a, uh, a miracle gene. Oh, fuck. <sighs> It looked like the visuals were going to be something we've never seen before or top notch, especially with James Cameron involved. So I was very excited. And of course, it's called Alita Battle Angel. Um, that is based off of Japanese manga that was popular in the early to mid 90s by Yakito Kishiro. I am not familiar with the manga or the name, but uh, learned about it just recently when I was trying to do my research. And I think it was John Lando, one of the other producers, the, the actual... Um, series the japanese manga was called battle angel alita but john lando or one of the producers was like no james we need to call it alita battle angel because if we look at your filmography all of your films start with either a t or a and i was like what and i actually looked and that's true except for like piranha that came out in like 1981 but we have the terminator aliens the abyss terminator 2 true lies titanic and avatar so it's kind of funny that all of you know james cameron did not direct this film uh, he was the writer and producer but still i just kind of found that interesting that you know most of all all of his films except for that one piranha does start with a tra but anyway let's get to the movie this has been directed by robert rodriguez i can't necessarily say i'm a fan of his but i do know his work uh, he did spy kids sin city uh planet terror and machete i did not like planet terror machete was decent for what it was um now the best thing about this movie to me were the visuals if you are a visual person if you want to have something nice to look at with all these effects and computer generated images and things like this this movie is the perfect thing for you um and what adds on to that is this film was actually shot in 3d it wasn't post converted which i am not a fan of i'm not a fan of 3d in general just to be honest with you unless it has to do with james cameron this film right here is just usually not that good, uh, but this was shot in 3D. If I am going to uh, pick a 3D mover, I do want it to be uh, shot in 3D instead of post converted. And uh, James Cameron, in my opinion, he is the grand master of 3D and uh, whatever involvement he had as far as that's concerned in this film. You know, he did a great job. So it's nice to look at. I saw it in Dolby uh, Vision at an AMC theater. Uh, and the 3D was great. Another great thing about this film is the, the oh, excuse me, the world building. Um, James Cameron, uh, I feel like I'm giving more credit to him. Well, usually this is his project. He wanted to uh, be behind the camera and direct it, but he couldn't because he's working on Avatars 2, 3, 4 and part 79. Um, so he, you know, he gave, he passed the torch on to Robert Rodriguez and James Cameron is very good at building worlds since what he did with Avatar. I think that's perfect. I mean, you know, yeah, it has some Pocahontas and Fern Gully themes and all that good stuff, but the world building in Avatar is phenomenal. And the world building in this film right here is phenomenal as well. And it takes place in the 26th century, I think to be exact year 2563. Of course, that's a long time in the future, a few hundred years. And then the technology in this film is just like breathtaking. There's like cybernetics and cyborg 
drugs and robots and just all kinds of stuff that you never would think of that is just prominent in this movie. And what I like about it is it's it's not when you see, when you see it, no one is in the movie. I mean, they live in the movie. No one is in the like, oh, my God, this is amazing. It's all normal. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like a remote control or something is normal. It's just that's just how it is. Cybernetics is just a part of life. Flying ships and floating cities, that's just, you know, the way it is. It is a, a giant leap into the future. And it's not it's not anything that you can relate to because we haven't seen technology like this in modern time or at the time we live in today. But it is something to aspire to. But I do like the little subtle uh, Easter eggs uh, that the filmmakers used and infused in this film to make it tangible for you to relate to it. So when you have all these robotics and things like that, just one little slight spoiler right here. They had like a bag of oranges like on a table and you would think, OK, it's just a bag of oranges. But no, this this bag of oranges really did uh, stand out to me and was able uh, it, it, it gave me the chance to be able to relate to everything that's going on on screen. It's like, OK, I, I, I may not have a cybernetic arm or heart, but hey, I know what a bag of oranges looks like. I, I can relate to that. So it just kind of adds that, you know, human element to it um, that I really did appreciate. Next thing that I loved about this movie was the action fight choreography. It is very well detailed. You can really tell that they sat down and hashed everything out to make sure that every attack, punch, blow, block, dodge, whatever was executed with optimal precision. And it, it was just great. You know, um, I mean, so, so far we have great visuals. We have great 3D, the 3D, nothing is really popping out at you at the screen, but you can really feel the depth like, oh my gosh, that is far away or that's really close. So visuals, 3D world building. The story is quite interesting. You you do want to know what's going on and what makes everything tick and talk and all that good stuff. And like I said, the fight choreography is great. The bad stuff about the movie, let's go ahead and get to that. There is not one single character in this entire movie that I cared about. I cared absolutely nothing for anyone we have the main character uh by the name of rose uh, rosa salazar she plays alita um you know they did uh, motion capture with her cg capture she was in uh bird boxes on netflix right now and also the maze runner and i really don't remember her in the maze runner but i mean her and christoph waltz um you know they're the main characters in this film and christopher waltz i think his name is like dr dyson uh yeah yeah Dr. Dyson Ido uh he's like a cybernetic genius those two were the most that I cared about but at the same time I really didn't care about them I didn't care about Christopher Waltz Jennifer Connelly's in this I didn't care about her Air Screen or Scrime Mahershala Ali I, I mean none of these characters I cared about now there is one character that that did stand out to me overall um his name in the film um is uh hugo his real name is kian johnson the first half of the film i thought he was great um he was a great supporting actor i, I liked everything that he was about he kind of lived by a code the acting was fine i mean you know it's somebody that I, you know i said sure what's up bro you know give him a pound or something like that you know keep him moving yada 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 but in the second half of the film something happened to his character and then he just kind of fell off the cliff i'm like i don't know what happened the acting was just trash they tried to throw in some little love story, which was a joke. I'm just like, it, it, it was like face palm hitting. Like, like what, what are y'all doing? Like, this is corny. This is stupid. What happened to this character? It, it just it ended up being very, very horrible. So, and then when it comes to the story, it was just too much. While you're interested in the beginning, or at least I, I was at, at, at one point in time, I'm like, okay, you're really just giving me story. And a lot of it just seems unnecessary. Like, I understand that this is world building, but like, what are we doing in this world now? I just don't care anymore, you know? Like, and they said that, like, I don't know how many adaptations of this series, of this manga is, and maybe more than one, but I was doing a little research and they were saying that this film right here is the combination of four books. And I'm just like, that is hurting the film by far. Now, and James Cameron said in, in, in a ton of interviews, excuse me, that, hey, if this film is successful, that he wants to be a part of two more. I mean, like, what what other story do you have left to tell if you're fitting four books into one movie with this being, a, what, two hours and 20 minutes? Yeah, well, two hours and two minutes. It seemed like it was longer. But, I mean, there is a, a, a mixture of good and bad in this film. Like I said, the visuals were great. The 3D is great. The world building is great. The fighting choreography and all that was nice. And the story was interesting initially. But the love story that they tried to put in here was stupid to me. It was It was cheap. It was lame. 
Um, I, I cannot attach myself to um, cybernetic characters. I, there's just no emotional weight to them, or at least it is for me. I just didn't care about them. Um, there was a, a, a end up being a lot of story points that were just unnecessary. I mean, you know, on another positive note, there was some uh, sequences where I got a vibe of Halo. I did play that game a lot back in 2002, 2003, 2004. Uh, but other than that, guys, um, I just really didn't care for it. I mean, you know, if you want story and characters, this may not be for you. But if you just want some action choreography and, um, you know, something nice to look at this. And, and that was early on. As soon as I saw the first fight, I was like, man, this is choreographed well, but I give a crap who wins or loses, you know. So if I were to rate Alita Battle Angel out of a one out of ten, I would give it a six point five out of ten. Yes, a six point five out of ten. But guys, that is just my opinion. Have you seen the Lita Battle Angel or do you want to see it? Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know down in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. If you don't, that's fine, but you can still subscribe to my channel. Sorry. You can also look me up on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All that good stuff. It's right there at the bottom of your screen, and I made it very easy by providing a link to all that good stuff down in the description box below. But guys, I just want to thank you again for tuning in to my opinion slash review for Alita Battle Angel. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery, and that's just my opinion. Peace.